Hi guys, Retro Trek Ralph here with another Star Trek model review. Now, if you read the description, fine, you know what it is. But there's a lack of Eagle Moss stuff coming in lately. It's down to the COVID crisis. It's down to production and whatever else, not being able to import and stuff. So you've noticed the past few weeks or so, they've been expanding certain bits for the Trek side of the channel for the Monday videos. Well, most of them come out on Monday. They might come sat weekends if I'm desperate to get them out and I'm, I'm desperate to show you. But there's a there's a model that I bought and it is actually a while ago it was the beginning of it was the end of last month it took over a month to get here it took a week to get into the UK from America and it's sat at Heathrow for three or four weeks just doing absolutely nothing but it is what I never had and this is what gets me with the blu-ray DVD market in this country they don't sell stuff properly they go here you go here's your DVD here you go, here's your Blu-ray. But in America, we've already done this one before with the second Star Trek film, Star Trek Into Darkness, we came with the Franklin. The uh, the lovely little oh, uh, quantum mechanics model kit with it. And it was absolutely brilliant having that with it. We don't do it in the UK. It's a shame that they don't. It's missing out on a massive, massive mean market. But here is a Star Trek three disc, digital with digital copy, Blu-ray edition. For the first reboot Star Trek. Now, comes with obviously three discs, comes with the usual gubbins, not sealed, but that's not an issue. It's not the DVDs I'm after. I've got probably three copies of this film. I think one's on a, a standard Blu ray issue, the second one's on a box set, which comes with an extra behind the scenes, which this would probably have got anyway, a disc as well, and then this one now. But this is not for the discs. I don't give a monkeys about the discs, but let's get this open. A little bit creased, but that's okay with me. So inside, like always, let's put that to one side a moment. So sort of pretend we're doing needle moss. Right, it comes with a nice little booklet, the take command for Star Trek, and it's the NVIDIA experience. And there's a code there, and I'm not sure if the code on here is for the transfer to PC. Yeah, it's a digital copy, which I don't think actually works. It was sold as a digital copy not included, which means he's already put the um, the code in. And I'm going to try that later to see. But then again, most of these digital services have, have actually all gone. Or they're going, at least. It's a bit of a shame. And actually, it advertises Star Trek DAC as well for the for Steam 360. Actually, I'm not sure if I've got DAC. I've got Star Trek. That's not Bridge Crew, is it? No. So, yeah. I would that as well. But yes, it comes with a nice little booklet inside. It also comes with one disc. Disc three, this is the DAC free game trial, which fine, I could probably use. 360 I have, so potentially I could faff around with this and play about with it a little bit. Now, let's get down to what I am actually excited about. The Star Trek, J.J. Abrams verse model which came with this and it is actually quite good for free models they had to split it down so it means that you fully assemble I'm just checking this as tape holding anything on they had to break it down or make it so it's well there's the tape so it has never been opened this it was on all four corners so it would actually fit on a DVD I mean the Into Darkness the Franklin that, that we got with that one, that was fully assembled and it just goes on the the magnetic base, which was quite nice. It, it kind of was quite flat anyway, so it wasn't too bad. Is there one in that corner? Ah, yes. But obviously this one, it's a self-assembly kit, and that's what I'm excited about, because see how bad or how, how good this actually is? So to start with, there's no stickers on here, everything is painted on, so there's no... Actually, that's not bad at all, you've got all these... Yeah, you're aztec I'm going to try and be as careful as possible. Now, before I get anywhere, I need to show you something with this. 
Yes, it's got a little piece of metal underneath there, but if I open it by pressing that in, you have the films. Special features and the feature film. That is really, really good. So this is its own DVD case, Blu-ray case. So, but we'll put that, leave that in there. A little bit of gap on there, but I think that's because that is the release button anyway, so it won't come apart unless you press that anyway, which is a good little idea. But we'll get this together now. Oh, is there another plastic on top of another plastic? No, I haven't got a plastic. Oh, yeah, boy. Ooh, you fool. Come on, out you come. All right, so plastic out of the way. Right, fully, full instructions. And if anybody doesn't know Star Trek, then they won't know the... You should know by now, anyway, the layout of the Enterprise. No matter what guys it is, the refit, the revamped the original or any concept art it's always two nacelles engineering saucer and neck and pylons but yes that's, that's that's fine but you wouldn't buy this unless you knew about the enterprise anyway so let's get on with these see they're not, they're not i wouldn't class this as absolutely excellent but for a almost freebie model which comes with it. They're actually really good, I like this. I'll assume that the green part is for, I was gonna say for starboard, but it's not. It's a port nacelle, left-hand side, because you know, on these ships you have red for port, green for starboard, because you'd usually pass on that side. See, you've got red for red, but I'll assume then now, yeah, you've got the, the green and the red on there, which, okay, fine, we'll leave it as is. Now we've got the next section, Looks like that will just clip into place. It might be a problem taking it back to pieces again. Yeah, that's a problem taking it back to pieces again. Might be able to get inside there to prise it out. Okay, so colour to colour. So starboard goes in as red, clicks into place. It says again, starboard goes in, clicks into place. Oh, they are quite tight with it being never been opened. Port green to green. We'll get up close and personal with this in a few seconds once it's all been done. Cool. I mean, this is a big hint to any other releases of any Star Trek box set. Throws an Enterprise. They could do this with all of them. With the next generation box set, do as Enterprise D. I'm guessing that that folds up, and I'm not happy with that folding up. But just give you that. I never liked the the stands, even on Eagle Moss stuff. It goes one side in, okay, and then one side in, okay, cool. A bit too back end heavy. However, it looks like that. I'd say it would have magnetised in, but it's not. That's the disc behind it. Okay, the silver, the shiny bit behind there. Okay, so back end in, possibly. No, front end. Right, front end goes in first. That's going to break, that is. I guarantee that it'll double break eventually. Here we go. Well, and the dishes fell off. There you go. Okay. That, for a freebie, is not actually bad. I wasn't expecting it to be... Uh, yeah. But, it's actually not bad. Let me get you a bit closer, like I usually do with these models. See, the writing part on there is not too bad at all. It's better than with the having a model kit and having the full decal being stuck over there with the edging bits. You've actually got some decent attempt at some panel in there. Phaser banks, bridge section, even with the Enterprise on the back, and a, a docking port, which is... Doesn't, unless it's an ejection port. Going right to the back, showing the blue accent lines, which these are lit anyway, but you can't get it do that on this sort of size model. Or you can, no, you, you possibly could, but it would be tricky to do. There's a port in a cell. 1701. Coming down the pylon. Figure for the shaky bits. See, everything that is should be lit up, like the blue bits underneath here, blue bits here, are all just painted light blue, which is a nice little effort. So we get the end of the nacelle. 
Can we get that with my grubby hands? Sorry for my hands have been working today. Underneath you've got your usual bump. But this is on the back end and you can't really see it too much. Whether it's right way around there, I can't. Yeah, it is right way around there. Screws, yes, yes. There's a three on each one of the cells, and there's three holding the main body together anyway. Is that the production number? It must be. 90,615. And you get underneath here. Nice, really. I've done too bad a job with that. Again, it's the light blue, which is meant to be it's glowing, and it's not. But it is. But it isn't. But it is. There's no light. There's no. There's everything. The windows. Why do they aren't? They, they are. It's a recessed. So possibilities are you could. There we go. You could drill them out and light them. Those ones there are painted on. They're painted on top of recessed parts. All around the edge of here are all painted on as well. But it's actually not. I like this. I quite like this. Hmm. I mean, size wise on this, this isn't a bad size. This is kind of. Well, you had to do it the same size for the CDs, the discs on the inside. Which is quite a funky little thing to do. Shame you couldn't get all three, but this will have been for the two disc DVD edition as well as the three disc Blu ray, so that's why we've got the other one in the packet over there. But size wise, I mean, yeah, the, the, the source is about the size of my hand, obviously, CD size. So it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's Eagle Moss XL size, but kind of a, a midway between. I'm trying to think. The, the, we actually had the the first JJ Prize model out, and it's kind of I think it's just a little bit bigger than this. So we've got to step down from the what we got from the the, the official release, the thirty five pound release. It was less than that for subscribers, and it was it was less than that way way before. But now they changed it. I'll just notice on the back end where the shuttle bay is. I'll get you in. Yeah, that's a nice little touch. Hmm. Some bits of this is really, really nice, what they've done with it. For a model, that's that's almost just a throwaway model. I'm not sure if it's a if it's a play thing or anything. I mean, I can see this going like, wee, and then the source a bit falls off, but I think I need to look into why that doesn't clip behind there right. But you wouldn't... You, you would. If you can't rest with any collection, you would kind of leave this on the the bookcase with the rest of your Star Trek collection. It's quite good. Oh yeah. Size wise pretty good. Quite like. Oh, hold on, there you go. She's actually clipped in place a little bit, but I'm sure if I throw it enough it's gonna fall down. Nice little insignia there on both sides. Not as much detail as what I've got with the model. My model kit. Actually, while we're here, let me just bring, bring you Big Brother into play, shall we? There we are. This is the model kit, the Ravel model kit that I made quite a while ago. Not on the channel, unfortunately, but I want to do stuff like that anyway. It, it is... Yeah, there's more detail on here anyway. There's the black ring round here, red round there. Different sort of, yeah, lighting effects. Everything glows up really well. I'll show you. There, they're off. There, they're on. Yes, but... Like I said, for a freebie model, that's not bad, but I wonder if I could. Because you've got clear sections on here, on the nacelles. You know, I'm not sure if, if I could or not, because you've got the, the pylons here are a one piece, so running a wire up there to power these would be a pain. That's probably hollow. Inside here definitely is hollow. Yeah, maybe... It, it, It'd be a challenge to do. What you'd have to do is, same as with the Enterprise D kit, when you try and light that, the um, the a AMT kit is on the nacelles, on, below, on the pylons. You have to channel away a little bit 
and be re put some really really fine cable in and then putty it over and then fill over again and repaint so you have to do that but they're only about two mil if that so you'd have to channel away you'd have to be brave braver than what i'm going to be to actually light the nacelles or independently light them take them to pieces put led possibly led on the bike so you can drill that out and then battery up from inside of these so that's possibility to do but yeah size wise yeah it's a massively massively different size but you don't these are a labor of love to do to do these properly and i've still not got this one right there's there's spinners inside here which the motors didn't really work for me at the time and then i sprayed over with matte and you can't really see them but it looks good anyway but this isn't about this one so let's get you out of the way jj prize and stick you back in here actually on scale wise i've actually got what's left of my 100th scale Enterprise, so they're about similar sort of size. I mean, this has been beaten up, this has been dropped quite a few times, but it's still got <laughs> yeah, it's still not too too bad. It was a wrong paint choice, the stand broke, but I did a nice little thing by putting a bottle top on there, <laughs> it actually stands up really well. So, yeah, it's, it's very, very, very similar sized. Let's mark it up, yeah. To the AMT kit, the Polar Lights kit, AMT Polar Lights, probably the same company that you get, it can get for the smaller scale stuff. So this would fit really well, properly with that. I know the actual scale of this is, like, example, here is on scale wise, on real world scale size. This is the Constitution class, <clears throat> and this is the size of what this ship was meant to be. This is what the problem with the JJ Abrams verse was, is. This ship is almost the size of the Enterprise, actually it's bigger than the Enterprise D. It's just a little bit smaller than the Enterprise F, I think it is. But this, this is the problem with, with when you get films, reboots and stuff like that. It just doesn't do the proper reality size. I mean, look at the size. This, this is proper, possible, probable scale from one to another. But with that, I'm waffling on. So, that in mind, thank you very much for watching. I hope you like that. Please like and subscribe, follow me on social media, consider being a Patreon. And if you've got any old models that you want, you're throwing away. I, I, I can't stand with people throwing stuff away. If you want to donate to the channel, stuff like that, I can kit bash, I can do all sorts of things for the videos. Give us a shout, give us a message, comment down below. And we'll arrange, I'll pay for posters obviously, but um, we'll um, see what we can do. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now. Now, just for a fun bit for the after the video, let's see how easy it is to take to pieces. Right, so... One, two... Okay, I didn't want that to pieces, but... Work is it? Discount, can I? Oh, okay, squeeze the neck in. No, oh, that's not gonna work. The cells, pylons. So the back end comes across easy. Ah, okay, so that's the part that come down, crash to Earth. Well, crash to um, that planet. Oh, god, that is that is in. That definitely doesn't fall back. This is where it breaks, boys and girls. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Hmm. Okay. Tweezers. Tweezers possible. Put in there, put out. Nope. Oh, they meant this to stay in, didn't they? Definitely that doesn't go. No, that stays in place. Definitely this back end. Oh, there you go, because it goes that way around and then out. <gasps> Ooh, that didn't break. Ta-da! <laughs> Not as easy as I thought, but probably shows it's pretty well, well made.
Thumbs up. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.